Right, today we got a smaller job to do while it's raining outside. <clears throat> the odometer isn't working. It's been staying put where it's at since I got the car. It might have been working before and just, you know, quit while it was sitting before I got it or it's been broken for a lot longer. Who knows? But we're going to see about getting the well, in the pot off, and I have a little gear to replace in it that's usually what breaks, so hopefully that's what's wrong with it and not something else, but we'll get into it. Alright, well the horn pad's off the wheel. We want, ran into one problem to start with. And that's at the 27mm nut in there, while the um, socket, the 27mm socket I have, it's an impact socket, it was just a hair to big to fit in there, so we filed a little bit of material off the wheel there, and now we can get almost in there. Might have to file a little more to get that in there, but then we can get the wheel off. Okay, the wheel is off now. We didn't end up having to file that anymore. It was just enough to screw to get through there. But so we got access to the <coughs> remove the um, cover down here and we'll I think we slide the um, control stocks off. They slide off as this one unit here. I don't say the for as old as this car is I mean these stocks still feel really good. They're not loose or anything. They feel nice and positive engagement. It's Definitely a uh, quality stocks. Anyway, so yeah, I gotta get a couple screws off under here, and then can start getting the thing flipped forward to get to the instruments. All right, well, we got the two little pieces off the bottom. We got the plastic panel here that sits there. Got that off, and then got off the little cover that goes over the bottom of the, I guess just the column there. So now we're going to get the two bolts that are on one there and one up there that are holding the uh, pot on so we can lift it up a bit and get the stock cluster thing off. And we got to loosen that little clamping bolt right there on it. Okay, so we got the bolts out of the cluster, so or the pod, so it's kind of, you know, just sitting there now, and we lift it up enough to wiggle this thing off there. It just slides off and comes off its connectors. So I actually decided it's going to be a little easier to get to those connectors. It's going to be easier to get to them from up top, which I guess you have to look through the windshield and stick my hand in there, but you can see it looks like it's going to be easier to release them from up here. Yeah, there's three of them. There's two on that side and one here, and then that should be enough to let the pod come forward and we'll get whatever that ticket is out of there too. So these little things on each side, you just lift it up and push it. Just a bit of a stretch here. I'm actually outside the car with my arm inside it. And they sort of come off. How oh, you see that bit there? So we're disconnected now, apart from switches on that side of the pod. So it looks like it's just got two zip ties kind of holding it in there, but it just kind of goes up. See. I think it's just going along there, so maybe we'll cut those zip ties so we can get some more slack in it. So we have to pull all those off, and we can put some new ones on when we're done. I think we'll do that. All right. Well, we didn't exactly take all the uh, pod switch connectors off. We just took the um, one off for the headlight switch. It looks like it's got its separate own, own separate wire. So <clears throat> that was the only one that was getting in the way. So it's off. There's a couple interesting things in here. I guess this is an extra one that looks taped off. I mean, it looks tape looks old, so I wonder if, and you know, there's some extra connectors on here, so I wonder if 
Some of this is year-to-year -year changes, or some stuff maybe even that's Europe-specific. Anyway, there's this extra wire on here going up here, which I wonder if maybe it's something, you know, maybe for the indicators for the uh, transmission range selector or something. But anyway, it looks like it's disconnected up here, so we'll just separate it and get it off there too. So there are four connectors going to the cluster on this car. All right, needed two hands to get that thing disconnected, so it's off. So, but now the cluster looks like it should lift up and out on this side. Yeah, yes. Okay, there we go. So it's loose on that side, and then I'll try not to damage that plastic piece. Oh, my leg. And a little more. It looks like it's just sitting on there. Which you can take this bolt out, or we might be able just to. Yep, slide it off. Try not to lose the bushings on the other end, but uh, yeah, that was just tape with the label. But hey, our cluster is free now. Let's see what we need to take off here to get to the odometer drive, which is on the back side of the speedometer, and I guess it's driven by a little electric motor. Because the speedometer works fine. The electric motor doesn't, apparently, so we want to make sure we don't damage any of these little delicate plastic PCBs. They're 32 years old and probably fragile, so hopefully we don't need to disturb those. So I do think we can get away without having to interfere with this old plastic PCB. So I think what we need to do is take off these screws around the outer edge here, which looks like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on this car. <clears throat> Some of the, I, honestly, I think this is year to year change, and then this one's weird because this car is a late 86, so it's got some S4 parts in it, which honestly wonders why it differs from some of the guides I saw, but get those off and see, cause then I think I'll end up taking a couple of these screws off, because this is the back of the speedometer, and it's going to have to pull off through the front. Alright, all those screws are out, so I think we ought to be able to lift the uh, cages off the uh, front of the faceplate here. Let's see if it'll... Oh, yep. So we have liftoff. Oh. A little a piece of label or something. Let's see a good way to... Uh, I'll set this down, find a good way to set this down, but it's off for now. These are all out, so I guess we'll have to get those screws off the back of the um, speedometer odometer unit here, and it should just pull out, it looks like. And I guess we'll clean up the faceplate of this. We'll use some uh, <coughs> cleaner and hopefully get that all taken care of. Alright, so I set the <coughs> gauges back in the rest of the cluster for now just to keep them off the table. So we took those two screws out there. I think these two are the last two otherwise holding the uh, speedometer and odometer unit in, so we'll um, see if we can set this here. Right, yeah, so that'll hold this up so this doesn't go tumbling back. So I guess now I will just get those last two screws off the... Uh... Yeah, it's already loose here, so these are definitely it. Screw. This seems like it's just sort of sliding out. Oops, that came off, and uh, yeah, yeah. Straight away we can see some. Uh, make sure there's nothing's falling out. What's that? I guess that must be part of the mech, the solenoid that does the odometer reset there. Come on, camera. Yeah, that's a little solenoid for the odometer reset. But, uh, yeah, i say something uh, failed there. So hopefully that's the gear we have. Well, it definitely isn't that gear, so I think this is the one we, uh, need, hopefully. Well, so one stitch of good news is that it seems like the odometer works otherwise, other than that 
broken gear, so hopefully that's all we need to replace. Because I can turn the little uh, gear back here and the trip pedometer turns and when it gets to the next mile it turns over the main odometer. I've probably driven the car about 250-300 miles since I got it. So I'll I guess I'll go ahead and turn the <coughs> miles back up to about where I think it should be, which since it's at 229,750 right now, I think we'll set it to 230,000, which is best is my knowledge. You know, all this legal crap, that's where it should be, I believe. So we'll just put it back so it's accurate again. So unfortunately, it looks like we do have to um, take the... Oh, that was upside down. Take the... Uh, faceplate and some of the odometer apart to um, change that gear because it drives the... I don't know if this thing would focus. The big, the new gear, it drive, it gets driven by the warm gear in that motor and then it goes underneath this gear that I was spinning earlier and turns the <coughs> odometer unit. So I gotta take the needle and the faceplate off and so I'm just to get some of these parts separated enough so I can change that gear. So the first thing we got to do is get the needle off the gauge, and you know, we're going to make note of where it belongs. And it looks like it's sitting right on the um, trailing edge of the first mark here. So we'll go ahead and get it off gently with a little plastic prior and probably even some cloth or something on the face so we don't scratch it up because that will bother me having to look at and then those little screws come off and I think that'll let the face plate off alright well that uh, face plates off and the needle and screws and everything and aside from getting a little bit of dirt on it and the paint right under where the screw was it's off in one piece so I guess we'll take these screws out and see if that can get us enough access to get that uh gear. Mm, there's four screws around, so we'll see if we can't Just carefully lift this apart. Doesn't quite want to. Let's see what's holding us there. Okay. We're separated drive gear and the wheels for the odometer, so that's good that came away and now we can get to these little clips to take the gears apart. Which of course the one we need to change goes under that one, which has another one on top of it. So I think we need to take all the gears apart just to change that one. Right, so it looks like we need to Push that little pin out and that'll free up these gears. So that pushed it out a bit. Gently pull it out. Uh, there we go, that pin's free. Uh, let's see, that gear's still engaging the rollers for the mouse, so I guess it's, yeah, we'll let it there. It messed up the trip, but not the actual odometer, so we'll set this off to the side. This one's got a little C-clip. There we go. And it's stuck to the magnet, so that sort of worked. So we'll set that there safe. And now, this little gear can pop on off. There we go. So that gear's off. And then this clip where the old drive gear was should just... Okay, apparently it doesn't just want to come off. Come on. Come on, clip. There we go. Alright, and 
it looks like the shaft there is a bit dirty so we'll see about cleaning it up and we'll put a little bit of silicone grease on there and make sure the new drive gear turns well. All right, so we cleaned up the shaft that the drive gear sits on it. It was just mainly plastic stuck to it from that old disintegrated drive gear. What's that? That was... Yeah, there, that's pretty good there now. So we'll see, make sure this sits on there. Well... So it turns good, and there's actually a little bit of crap from the old gear in the teeth of this one, so I guess we'll get... Keep that out of there. Clean this gear off a little bit. And we'll get this guy back in place. Again, he just turned the tripodometer there a bit. And we'll, there we go, get that pin back in. And then get the C-clips, and we'll be all good. And here just to show a bit about how this works, because I, I find little you know, things like this fascinating. And it's you know, just a real simple mechanism, so you can see there's those little... Geez, maybe I need to get something better to point it. So you see there's those little... This gear, silver gear, gets driven constantly by the odometer drive motor. And as it comes around, you see those little pair of teeth there. So as we come around here to the next number, the little gear there for the odometer drive wheel can fall into it, and it forces that to turn. And then whenever that gets past there, it's solid there, so that little gear can't fall down. So it stays there the whole way around until those little teeth come around again. And then it engages that, and it turns that, but you see too, it carries. That also happens at the next one this time, because it's at 9, so now it turned that one over. And you see these this time they're all going to line up, so it's going to turn that one, and all these across the top there, to 230,000. Anyway, now with the uh, drive gear back on, all the other gears back on. Now we can reassemble it with the uh, rest of the speedometer. So this goes on here this way. And you got to make sure it goes down straight because you don't want to bugger up the little nose of the speedometer drive. So that sits there. Solenoids clear everything. There, and we're in place now. So we'll go ahead and put the screws in, but for now you can see um, that new drive gear is engaged with the drive gear on the motor there. So now the motor, as long as the motor still works, which I think it will, I mean, chances are it does. The failure was definitely this gear. So it should turn, and the odometer should work now. So now we just got to more or less just reassemble everything the way it came apart. We'll very carefully set the face back on there because we don't want to get any dirt, scratches, anything on there. We'll do as best we can to make sure those screw heads get lined up with the paint marks from where they were before so that we don't have to look at anything unsuitable from up top. Best. There we go. So that's back on. And then we just got to get the needle back on right back where it was, which was on the trailing edge of that mark. There we go. It's all good. Odometer set, so now just gotta put it back in there the same as we took it out. Alright, the gauge pod all cleaned up. Cleaned up the front screen of it, so 
had a little bit of ring of dirt, I guess, where it sits around the pod, but <coughs> looks good now. The speedometer in there again, odometer set where it should be. Alright, well, electric's back on in the car. Nothing's immediately smoking or arcing. Start with lights. Gauge is all lit up. <laughs> well, the gauges that we can see working for now work. So we'll have to take it for a ride and see how the uh, speedometer and odometer work. And it looks like our odometer's working. We're gradually turning over there. So hopefully it keeps on working.